So one of the situations I'll see on a fairly regular basis is women who have had a hysterectomy and, or else just had ovaries removed or whatever the case, and I'm not here to question a practitioner's decision to, to do that, but when they are left without hormone restoration following a surgery like that, it's, it's a tough situation to live with. In fact, I think doctors should be required to give out their personal cell phone numbers to every woman they do this to because they will get calls at home. When you have a, a hysterectomy or, or the ovaries removed, that's a, that's a sudden crash in, in all those hormones that those organs have anything to do with. And that's, I mean, they call it surgical menopause. It's, it's like going into overnight the menopause situation so you don't have any you know time to ease into it or sort of get used to diminishing levels these happen just all of a sudden now what what happens when you have a dive in estradiol levels let's just talk about that first the skin suffers dramatically we there's a in the first 5 years collagen levels can fall 30% after after menopause so that can happen overnight. What does collagen do? That's, that's in charge of keeping the skin firm, uh, keeping the integrity of the skin there, um, elasticity, that sort of thing. Skin thickness also is, is a factor or a function of estrogen. So wrinkles, um, thin skin, it tears more easily, it, it injures more easily. You know, who wants that? Dry skin. Let's talk about hair. We know that hair responds dramatically to hormone levels. Just look at, look at the hair of someone who is pregnant. Or if you have had that experience, you can probably relate. Your hair usually looks better there, better during pregnancy than it does any other time. It looks healthier, fuller. And in fact, we know that when estrogen levels are, are up, hair tends to spend more time in the antigen phase or the growing phase than the, the telogen phase, which is what we call the resting phase, where it molts and comes out. So hair, hot flashes. If anybody's ever had a hot flash or a night sweat, that's eh, not something you look forward to. Foggy thinking is, is what is mentioned a lot when estrogen levels fall down. And there's something behind that because the vascularity or the circulation of the brain is not as good when estrogen falls. In fact, Alzheimer's levels, a risk of Alzheimer's can be reduced as much as 50% by just restoring this estrogen or keeping it where it, where it was. So that's important. And just, you know, short-term memory, being able to recall things, remembering what you went into this room to get. That's what they mean by foggy thinking. And on this symptom alone, a doctor really ought to think about restoring hormone therapy, and that's the vaginal environment, dryness. Very, very painful for, to have intercourse when you have no secretions and the, the vaginal lining is not thick and healthy as it should be and be maintained by, by estrogen. It needs to be a proper pH, just the right acidity to maintain good, healthy thickness there and functioning tissue. And this can progress, and it will progress to the whole urinary tract to where there gets to be some incontinence. We call it stress incontinence. You laugh or sneeze or, you know, God forbid, jump on a trampoline or something and all of a sudden you're leaking. That is a known fact. It will progress to that point. Bone density, bone just like collagen in the skin, can fall as much as 30% in those first five years. That puts you at risk for a bone break. Heart disease. We know that men trail women, sorry, women trail men by about 10 years in uh, heart attacks and, you know, with age. And that's because of that protective estrogen. When that falls off, then they start to have the same levels of cardiac and uh, coronary artery disease that men do. So you can't just think that because you don't have a uterus, you don't need these hormones anymore or because you don't have hot flashes, you don't need them. We know for a fact these estrogen receptors are located all over the body, in the bones, the brain, breast, skin. There's all kinds of reasons to keep these hormones where they need to be. 
which is why I say hormones are all about getting the most you can out of life every decade, not just after menopause. These things can occur much earlier.